Why do we sing? Why do we worship? Why do we worship God? Why do we worship God with singing? And the question is odd. Actually, it's an odd question because if you look at the history of music, music was created to worship the God of those people. We don't think that. Today we don't think that, but you go and check yourself what music sounded like just a few hundred years ago. I've got a PhD in music here. Is that true? What kind of examples can you give us? Bach. Bach? The greatest composer. The greatest composer of all time. Music is to give glory to God and for the recreation of the soul. So music was for us to connect with God. It's a gift for God. The new idea, the new trend of music is for me. Music is for me to explore my pains and broken relationships and my feelings. and All this is utterly new in the past 6,000 years of music. This is new. But we live in an odd age. So we have to ask people, did you sing to God today? <laughs> when for 6,000 years, music was for God. Now you may not know the right God. You may have made music for another God of another nation, a false God. But everyone understood music was for God. The other music may be just for war. They blow the trumpet or beat the drums because they're getting men excited to go and kill each other. If, if that counts. But otherwise, the, the music that is pleasurable, that is pleasant, that is soothing to the soul, this was directed towards glorifying your God. So it's something that's strange because I actually understand this. I, I, God has set up my life in such a way that I seem like an ancient guy. But I understand this somehow because I was not blessed with a lot of musical ability. Believe it or not, uh, today I sing in church and I worship in church and I worship at home, but believe it or not, I have never uh, sung any song until I became a Christian. I did not have the confidence, I did not have the desire I love music. I, I have a huge collection of music, like that was before I was a Christian. I explored world mu music, Mongolian throat singing, classical Western, African guitar, reggae, you know, Caribbean music, uh, you name it, I have it. You name it, rock and roll, soft rock, hard rock, rap, what kind of rap? Techno, I had it all. I had it all. But I never sang. I turn it on, enjoy it, I never sing to it. I have never once sang in a karaoke bar. I've never done karaoke. I've never, in my experience, I've never sang a song for a girl. I've never sang a song for myself. The first time I sang in my life was for God. So to me, it's intuitive because I wasn't blessed with the ability to sing, and I didn't have the confidence to do karaoke or, or whatever else people do. So music, to me, is what music has always been for thousands of years. Its main purpose is to glorify God. So even if I turn on, I, you know, I realize I say some things like last week, I said, you know, just turn on your favorite music and just start worshiping doesn't matter even if it's not Christian. And then I had to think about that for a week and realize, wait a second, a lot of people would easily misinterpret that because they're into heavy metal or they're into some really you know, dark music that led them into drugs, that led them into illicit relationships. And then Pastor Steve said, I can go back. and No, I did not say. Music is spiritual. Music has, has a spiritual impartation. But because I wasn't uh, 
caught up or uh, driven along by music. I don't have the same passivity to music as a lot of you do. So a lot of you would say, I'm tired, I'm going to veg out. I've got noise-canceling earphones, I've got the best whatever, and I'm shutting everything out. And what are you doing? You're passively receiving the feelings of another human being. You're passively absorbing their thoughts, their emotions, their complaints. You're just receiving it. And you often sing along to it. And have no idea why then you're so open to psychedelic experiences or drugs or some kind of uh, temptation. So I never took music passively like that. You know, I mean, never. Maybe, maybe I understand it, so maybe sometime I did. But that is not my main experience with music. Music became alive to me, and I could sing along to it after I got born again, and I realized God would like worship. He made music for us to worship Him. So once you understand that, then... I can go back to some of the old songs that didn't have spiritual content. You understand that some songs, they, they are, they're like they're screaming out of some drug-induced uh, in, experience. So that kind of music, we got to say, I fast from that, I say goodbye to that, that's done. But if there's this music with you know, some good instrumental, uh, quite neutral uh, lyrics, or sometimes you'll find, even in reggae, a lot of the Rastafarian you know, uh, lyrics, they come straight from the Bible. So then I could listen to that and say, well, I'm not taking that passively into my soul. I'm going to hear that and say, thank you for the melody, thank you for the instrument, and I'm worshiping God. I sing to you in this particular rhythm or beat or whatever. So that's what I mean when I say, wake up, turn on your favorite music, all right? But if you, you don't have my experience, you might have to say, don't turn on your favorite music in the secular world, but turn on good Christian music and just worship. Start singing. Start at the presence of God will come down. What do you need? In His presence is fullness of joy. Well, can you be joyful, like fake joyful? No. Right? If it's joy, it's joy. That means you got the victory. You got the, the, the debt paid off that you need. You got the sickness healed. They will, joy is real. In His presence is fullness of joy. What kind of joy do you want? The fullness of joy in His presence. But you need to get into taking music and giving it back to God. Worshiping God. And if you are so blessed that you can play an instrument and you can sing, I don't know why you're not doing it. I wish I had it. You know, now I do it by faith. I just overcome my fears or my embarrassment or whatever. And, and I just, just sing to God. I don't care if, you know, people don't think I'm a good singer, but I just, I'm giving it to God. But some of you are so blessed. Why would you sit on that gift? Because some of you had a bad experience. So what? Some of you were were forced to play the piano. And you had to take all 12 grades of tests and whatever qualifications. And so you leave that experience, which your parents meant well, but you leave that with a vow, an inner vow that says, I will never... Right? That's what people do. They take these childhood pains and then they say, as an adult, I will never touch this again. I will never play the piano again. I don't care if the church is, you know, is missing a piano player. I will never touch the piano in church. These inner vows are wrong. They're childhood impediments. You were created with a gift. So what? You had a teacher. Maybe they weren't not as gifted as you. They were not gifted at teaching you. So what? Now you can play. Convert it, change it. Everything that is good in your life, change it, turn it to God. And then you'll experience the fullness of joy. Amen?
And then if I can do it and you don't have much ability, you, I'm sure you can do it. Because I have like, I had zero, you know. Then over time I learned to pick up some chords on the guitar and all that. But I, you never see me playing here. I just do it privately. Happy to do it privately. So, worship is so important. Anything else? Our resident doctor? I just got a revelation. This is such an interesting response. I asked an important question, what was music like, to someone who's gifted in music since young. And he says it was a way to self-glorify. Did you hear the word? Glorify. It's just the purpose of music. You're either going to glorify God or you're going to glorify self. You're going to glorify some woman that you've given your heart to. But music is created for glorifying. You can't get away from it. There's no neutral ground with music. So when you're very, very talented and if you're not humble and born again and realize like Bach, this music is created for the recreation of the soul and for glorifying God, then you will turn that gift to say, look at me, right? Watch me, hear me, you know, buy my whatever, CDs or MP3s or whatever they sell. But that's the nature of music. It's a very powerful thing. And if you realize, the second most powerful being in the universe was created for this purpose, to make music. You will realize why we have such a warped understanding and application of music. He's in charge of music on the planet right now, isn't he? The stuff that's coming out gets filthier and filthier because that's what he was in charge of. He knows music really well. He knows the ins and outs. I'm sure he's got more scales and more octaves than humans have. But he twisted it. And just by twisting music, twisting the, the fact that it's meant to go this way, glorifying God, and he turned it to glorifying himself, he became Lucifer. Or he became the devil. Satan. The adversary. And one thing that describes the Antichrist is he's a big mouth. He's a big mouth. The devil sure knows how to use the mouth to curse, to accuse, to condemn. Is that true? Your worst stuff is it's like they say, sticks and stones, what is it, uh, will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. What a lie that is. What a lie. Uh, words will rip you up, and, and the effects will last much longer than sticks and stones. The devil knows. So when we become Christian, we are converting those negative curses and experiences into a God-glorifying experience. Our mouth has to start blessing. James says, how can the same mouth speak blessing and cursing? It doesn't happen. You can't even have a source of fresh water and salt water from the same spout. It doesn't happen, right? So we really need to get a hold of our words, and this will begin to change the direction of our lives.